Welcome back to The Best Advice. We're joined today with Bob Proctor, and now I'd like to introduce you to Nick. Welcome, Nick. Thank you. That's good to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. So what were some of the messages you may have absorbed through your childhood about money? Uh, my parents uh, believed very well that, you know, uh, I, I was actually very well trained, I think, on money, on the idea that, uh, you know, f for instance, I remember when I first got my first Visa card, my dad's like, remember, it's not your money, it's, mm. it's Visa's money. Um, work and put money aside, you can, you know, afford to now, uh, even though I haven't. But uh, <laughs> uh, regardless of the best advice, I, I, I still manage to uh, get into trouble sometimes. Um, my father was not very much on, you know, you need money to be, have happiness, but, um, you know, it certainly makes certain things easier. <laughs> True. So, um, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, my mother was very, you know, make sure to save, make sure you have a little extra just in case those emergencies come up and mm -hmm. you have something available to you mm -hmm. uh, in case those, like I said, in case those things that come up that you are unexpected. So she, right. was, she was very, very, you know, made sure we understood that very well from a young age. Good, good, okay. So, um, have you ever had any difficulties in relationships with the, regards to money? As my, as a therapist, I often see couples who have, one's a saver, one's a spender, one wants to save for retirement, the for other sure. one wants to live now in for the sure. moment, let's spend, spend. Well, have you had any difficulties? In, in my relationships, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm always the spender, I guess. I'm, uh, I'm very much, uh, you know, I have the money, I'll buy it now. Right. Um, uh, or defer it to a credit card or that kind of thing. Just try to. Um, whereas my my my, uh, my previous partners have always been more savers, mm. more you know, wait and purchase when you have the money and uh, don't buy, don't go for the immediate gratification. I guess wait and 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 pay for it, and you'll feel and you'll feel be it, uh, better. Right. Um, yeah. I remember as a child, like I said, uh, as a child, I, I saved up and I bought my, my first guitar by through a savings program. But the second I got access to credit, it was, you know, buy, buy, buy. Mm -hmm. I can I can get all these things immediately. I don't have to wait mm -hmm. any longer. So mm -hmm. um, that, those were some conflicts within the relationship, obviously, because uh, they, they, they wanted to save, whereas I'm more than willing to spend. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It's not uncommon for um, different types of spenders or savers to be attracted to opposites. Because for a, a saver, it's wonderful to be with a spender initially because it's, wow, you know, we can have some fun and it's spontaneous. Mm -hmm. However, over a long-term relationship, that can create a lot of different conflict. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see why. It's, uh, you know, opposite, the idea that opposites attract is, is, is definitely true in some circumstances. Um, I, I, I do like the idea though of, of having a nest egg. I just never seem to, to get that far and I guess that's my main question is, you know, being a student going back to university and amassing all this debt, I'm curious, if, am I supposed to be saving? Am I supposed to be, you know, try to pay off those debts as quickly as possible? I, I'm, I'm kind of conflicted when it comes to those kinds of questions. Okay, sure. so that's, okay, Bob, can you, can you uh, speak to that? Yeah. Uh, I think what, Nick, what you're saying is probably the advice that most everyone gets from parents who are reasonably well-balanced individuals, um, you know, but they, they weren't teaching you how to earn it. What they were talking about is how to handle it once you've got it and <clears throat> don't spend it before you get it. That's pretty common. What you have to learn is how do you earn it? How do you earn it in abundance? Because there's no end to what you can earn. Now, I hear you, you're going, you're going back to school. Why are you going back to school? Uh, well, essentially after about seven years working various jobs uh, in the retail and service industries, I decided that, I don't know, I, I guess uh, I had a conversation with myself. Essentially, I could be more than this. I, could, I can do more. Um, but to get there, it would it would take a degree. So that's that's essentially what led me back to university, and and you know, going to university takes money. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so. well, listen, Nick, yeah. I'm not anti-school. Mm -hmm. I think education is something that's sacred. But I'm going to tell you something: a degree is not going to help you earn more money. There's all kinds of people walking the street today who have masters and doctorates who aren't earning any money. People are going crazy by degree. We get locked in 
go to school, get a degree, get a good job, and you're going to be safe as Adam's ox. That doesn't fly anymore. You don't get paid for what you know, and that's what the degree tells the world. They tell you what you know. You get paid for what you do. And, you know, school is not going to teach how to earn more money because the teachers don't know how to earn more money. As a people, we ought to be embarrassed by the way we treat our teachers. The, the best teacher could be the lowest paid. Their pay is based on seniority and credits. That doesn't mean that they're a good teacher. The worst teacher could draw the highest pay, and the highest best teacher could draw the lowest pay. But w the teachers don't teach us how to earn money. And going back to school and getting a degree is not going to increase your income. Yeah. What you want to do is get, I'll tell you what, I, I, um, I talked to my assistant earlier today. You can go online, go to bobproctor.com slash TV. That's bobproctor.com slash TV. You go there, and we will give you a program. It costs a couple hundred dollars. We'll give it to anybody who wants to go there on the, the success puzzle. And you'll start to understand more about you and when you learn about you, that's when you can start learning about earning money. See, the earning of money is, um, you know, it's really based on you and how much you know about yourself. We can go all the way through school and learn nothing about ourselves. I had a, a seminar here um, uh, about two weeks ago. We had a, um, a psychiatrist in from Saudi Arabia who had been in psychiatry for 16 years. And he was saying what I was teaching, he was fascinated with after three months of studying it. We're teaching them really what makes them tick, why you do what you do, why you don't do what you want to do. Like you know the basics about what to do with money when you get it, but you're not doing it. Well, you should ask yourself, why don't I do what I know how to do? It would give me the results I want again. Now, they're the kind of questions you want to be asking yourself. See, the part of our mind that school focuses on, that gathers information, they give you the books, and if you read the books and you remember what's in the books and they, you can answer the questions they give you, then you get the degree. But that has got nothing to do with the part of your mind that controls your behavior. That's your conscious mind. That's the intellectual mind. The subconscious is where the paradigm is, and paradigms literally control our behavior, and our behavior produces the result. Get that program. Download it, Nick, or anybody that can hear me. Go to bobproctor.com slash TV, and you'll download the success puzzle. There's a, an exercise book in it, and there's six audios. And study it. Let the audios lead you through the exercise book. Am I making sense, Nick? That, yeah, that makes sense. I, I agree with the idea that, that school doesn't teach us. I, I, and in certain ways, it... I, I've always thought the school as, especially in university, as a way of unlocking, I guess, the parts of our mind that maybe are well, but not that's there. not true. That's not true. Sometimes they lock it up tighter because we get the idea that if we just get more information, we've got thousands, hundreds of thousands of people graduating from universities just in North America this year that are going to be drowning in debt debt to get their degree to go to school and they're not able to find a job to earn the money to pay the debt. Hmm. Don't tell me that. I got two in university. <laughs> well, you better start teaching them how to earn money because the school's not going to teach them. No, I think we're that... living in a different society today. Right. No, they're going to they're going to use this program that you just There's, gave us. Anybody anybody that gets that program and downloads it. I've been studying this for 51 years. I was sitting in a fire hall in East York when I started to study this. I was earning $4,000 a year. About a year later, I was earning 175. I took it over a million. Hmm. I sat in a den in, uh, in, in Chicago in, on a house on Maplewood Lane in Glenview, Illinois, and I lived there for about five years. I sat down with a pen and a pad, and I set a goal of having a company that operated all over the world. We operate in 94 countries hmm. today. Hmm. And that is because people are interested in learning something about themselves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sure. Yes, yeah. that's great. Well, thanks, Bob, for that amazing generosity. This is going to help so many different people, young, old, middle-aged, everybody. Well, we'll leave that up there for, oh, I'd say 
we'll leave it up there until the first of next week. Okay. And anybody that wants to download it can get it. Just go to bobproctor.com slash forward slash TV and download the success puzzle. And Nick, get it and study it. Study it like a scientist. Because what it's about, it's about you. It's about how your mind works and how to alter the paradigm. See, it's the paradigm. That's like a program in your subconscious mind that's causing you to do what you're doing. And you've already said on air that you're doing things you don't want to do. Mm. But I'm going to tell you something. Ninety-some percent of the population are doing that, so don't feel bad. No. My mother used to say, why'd you do that? And I'd say, I don't know. And she says, what do you mean you don't know? You know better. I know. Why are you doing it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever feel that way? Sometimes, yeah. I don't know. I, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I actually enjoy, right now I'm enjoying my time at university. It's, it's definitely difficult work, and um, I, can, I can see the, at the end of it, well, I, I understand that there's, we need to push ourselves, we need to visualize the task. So that, that does, I guess, to, to use your parlance, resonate with me, mm -hmm. with the idea of that we need to see ourselves in, the, in where we need to be. I think, Nick, I think you gain something in university you can't get anywhere else. I think you develop a social intelligence, you're mixing with other students mm -hmm. and that, but they are not going to teach you how to earn money. I'm not against school, I'm all for it. I encourage people to go to school. Mm -hmm. But I make it very clear that they're not going to teach how to earn money in school. And money is vitally important. To say it's not important is absurd. Mm -hmm. It's vitally important in the area that it's used. Yeah. Well, agreed, yeah, no, agreed. Yeah. Usually people that say money's not important and it won't make you happy, they're usually people that don't have any. <laughs> yeah. Now, having money doesn't make you a better person. It makes you more of what you already are. If you're not a nice person and you have a lot of money, you'll become worse. If you are a nice person, you'll become better. Money is a magnifier. Money's neither good nor bad. Money's just an idea. Exactly. Yes, and there's, there's a principle called the adaptation principle that actually has done research showing that people who um, win, win a million dollars, for example, that their happiness quotient goes back down to their normal level within a year. So you're absolutely right, Bob. It doesn't give us happiness. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It certainly doesn't make us unhappy. <laughs> doesn't make us unhappy. <laughs> no. Good no. point, Nick. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, well, we need to take uh, another break. Bob Proctor, I am ecstatic that you're on our show today. Thank you so much, and thank you for this generous offer to the audience and the viewers. And hopefully we'll connect very shortly. Thank you very much, Kathy. It's a pleasure being here. Nick, study the program. <laughs> All the <laughs> best. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Thanks.